Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. And uh, we currently have Tim Ord. Every Tuesday and Thursday, Tom has Tim Ord on the show. And uh, this Thursday is no different. Tim, can you hear me? I sure can. How Hello, are you doing? Uh, Hello? Yep, you doing all right, Tim? How you doing? Yep, okay, yeah, okay. I faded out there for a second, so... But yeah, um, I guess I guess we can start looking at charts if you want. Absolutely, let's take a look. We have a chart one up right now. This is the arm seen in, or excuse me, arm S N Y A. Right, that's a, actually the trend. That's arms index for Perfect. New York Stock Exchange. And uh, yeah, what's there's something a little bit unusual going on here? Uh, the middle window <coughs> is the twenty one day arms, and the top window is the uh, 10 day arms and in between that's the SP or SPY and normally when you get the 21 day arms up in bullish territory uh, last time that happened was in March of last year um, actually we kind of had a, a slew of them there all through that bottom process but normally when you, you get the arms on a 21 day above 1.2 uh, we hit, I think, probably one point or close to one point three. We're at one point two one right now. A lot of times, the market goes in a trending mode, so it's not just going to go up for a couple of days. A lot of times, it goes up a couple of weeks or even a couple of months. Uh, the shaded pink area on this chart shows the times when the that twenty one day, which is basically a month of panic, uh, trend reading above one point two on a daily basis is carrying kind of a panic day and you get 21 days of that that's basically a whole month of trading of panic so the more days of panic the more uh the longer term rally uh is implied uh so we're thinking uh or actually i'm thinking anyhow the market is probably starting to trend here we're not just going to rally a week or two i think we may rally a month or two or, or, or even okay. longer. And I got some other indicators we're going to go look at uh, as we go through uh, uh, the charts. But this is one <laughs> indicator since the 21 day trend is above 1.2. A lot of times that projects uh, multi week, if not multi month rallies. Uh, so how high is high, we don't know yet. But uh, you really don't want a shorter market. When the 21 day trends above 1.2, or even a 10 day trend above 1.2. And right now, both of them are above there. See. Not saying we could have some down days in the market. You can, but ultimately, the market uh, will, will trend higher. So let's go to chart two. Yep, we have it up. And uh, this is kind of a short term view. Um, the red, this is a. Uh, the bottom window is basically just the volume for the SPX, uh, the daily chart. And next window up uh, is the uh, SPX. The next window up is the SPX fixed ratio. Top window is the SPY. The first thing I want to talk about is the, is the bottom there. The market, at least yesterday, was up five days in a row. And today is not over yet, but it looks probably going to be up six days in a row. Uh, six, momentum kind of rules the market. Uh, it kind of actually, uh, of, of all the, uh, of all the stuff I look at, momentum is probably the most important to me to look at. And if you get five days up in a row, there's an 83% chance the market will be higher within five days. So even though you may have a day or two or down or even maybe three down days, ultimately you'll break to new highs. And if we're up again today, uh, six days in a row up, I forgot what that percentage was, but I think it's in the low 90s. If we're up today again, uh, so even though we may see a mild consolidation here, I don't think it's anything to get really bearish about. It may trend down a little bit or sideways here for the next couple of days, uh, especially if you're up that many days in a row. But the the consolidation should be mild, and ultimately we will start to break higher again. So I don't think anything meaningful is developing here. And that blue that shaded area I got there. Uh, right is showing that the SPX VIX ratio made a higher high as the S&Ps made a higher high. That's usually a bullish divergence, suggesting at some point the market's going to keep going higher. Right at the end is usually when you get the bearish divergence. So far, we don't have that. Uh, so uh, short term, maybe you might see a, a couple of days of weakness. Uh, but in general, the trend is up. 
uh, we're still holding long here. So I don't think anything, again, worthwhile uh, top is, is not forming here at all. It's just a, right. a mild consolidation uh, than higher prices. Let's take a look at uh, chart three. Give me one second. Okay, perfect. We have it up. All right. This is a point I, I try to, uh, to make. Uh, the, the bottom window is the VIX. Next window up is the SP, SPX VIX ratio. And above that is the SPX. And I want to point out here, uh, the VIX usually signals the top, near me at term top, start forming. Because when the, the SPs will, will keep making higher highs, and that ratio, which is second window up from the bottom, will make lower highs. And I pointed out uh, the last two tops, uh, the 2022 top that peaked out in late 2022 or t- 2021, early mm-hmm. 2022. And that top we had back in uh, 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 2020, there was a top. And both the, the SPX ratios made higher higher lows or uh, lower highs as the SPs made higher highs. And that was a big warning sign that a, a decline was coming. Well, we don't have that here. Uh, in the uh, areas we have right now circled in blue, we got the S&Ps making higher highs and that ratio also making higher highs. There, again, there can be some short-term divert or uh, short-term pullbacks, but intermediate term wise, uh, the market looks pretty good. This is a weekly chart, so it it looks at the bigger picture. And right now, as it says right now, I, I think that 2024 will be an up year, and um, and we may be actually even starting a, a trending market. Over the next several weeks, if not, maybe we we trend all the way into May or June. I think it's starting to look like, so it's it's really time to kind of be long here. Uh, and and this, you've you've had this rally. That. I think is still in the early stages. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no no no! Definitely my my bad for interrupting you. It's just every time that I've had you on and I've been filling in, uh, your your indicators were calling it even even when we were having a really kind of consolidation period. I think you're targeting I. I I'm going to try to find the, the chart you sent, but you had um, a potential target in the SPX around, you know, 5,000, right? Yeah, 5,700, actually. That was a, a monthly chart on the S&Ps, and that right. was a head and shoulders bottom, I think, formed, uh, going on, taking the top of 2022, uh, and uh, the high we had back in July of 2023, I thought that could be a head and shoulders bottom. And we broke above that neckline with yes. the sign of strength. And yeah. uh, you take bottom of the head and you take the measurements to the neckline. You add that onto the neckline. You come up around 5,700 on the S and P's, which uh, there's there's a lot of targets up in that mid 5,700 area. So I think we could hit it this year. So um, definitely, we're, and we're you know, I mean, on music here. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, you had the spy also breaking that you know 480 level again with conviction. And just continue to go up. Tim, stay right there. We'll be uh, we'll be right back. Welcome back, folks. The ES Mini up about 0.22% right now. Russell up about 0.41. NQs off 0.14. And the Dow futures, again, about the same, up about 0.24%. We are still with Tim Ord of the OrdOracle.com. Tim, are you still with us? Yep, I sure am. So uh, Yeah, we are uh, on chart I'll... three at the break. Oh, yeah, we were talking about the monthly S&Ps and uh, that monthly chart. Yes. Um, and it could fail, but uh, it looks pretty good. There's other actually charts supporting that idea that this year is going to be a pretty good up year. And also, this is a election year. They're not going to mm-hmm. let the market really crumble here, you know. But yeah. I think it will be at least double digits, um, you know, at least 10%. Maybe I'm thinking another, you know, close to 20% again. But anyhow, uh, go back to chart three here. I'm going to also suggest or point out that the bottom window is a VIX, and a lot of times when that VIX is is below 17, which is um, all actually all that blue area, I, I kind of shaded blue there. Uh, a, lot, a lot of times when that VIX is below 17, the market is in a uh, trending mode. So there's a lot of different type of indicators suggesting that 
not every day is going to be an up day or not every week is going to be an up week. But there's not going to be any major down weeks probably going forward here, uh, I, I think, over the next several months. I think this market, you know, the money, uh, most of the money, I think, will be made the first half of this year, I'll put it that way. It may get choppy as we get close to election around November. Uh, but between now and June, I, I think this this, this market is just going to keep, in general, climbing up. So that VIX, because of its below 17, I think that's another indicator suggesting that uh, we could see a trending market. And actually, go to chart four here. Okay. Here's, here's another indicator that may also suggest that we're in a trending market. Right. Uh, the, the top window is the RSI, and the middle window is the daily SPY. And it's pretty rare for the RSI to get 80, uh, around the 80 range. And I marked it with the blue dotted lines on the chart. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got 80 back on uh, uh, RSI, 80 on the um, S- SPY on uh, December 18th of, of last year, about a month ago. And uh, normally when you, when you get that, that's never the final high. And most times the market um, has a multi-month trending market. So I'm, I'm thinking we're still early in the, in the market uh, trading-wise. And I'm thinking um, if, if you look at all the times those blue markets or the, the blue or the the uh, dotted blue line happened, the market at least rallied multi-months. So I'm thinking yeah. uh, there's another reason why I'm thinking this month will be up, next month will be up, you know, probably March is up, April up, and maybe even May and June. But uh, I think this market is probably in a trending mode right now by uh, several different types of indicators. You know, the 21-day arms suggests that, the uh, VIX suggests that, and the RSI on the daily uh, SPY suggests that we're probably in a, in a trending market. So uh, it, it, look, it looks to me everything's kind of lining up here to be bullish. Definitely. So that may change. If it does, we'll change with it. But right now, uh, I don't see any major problem right in front of me uh, other than you know, some solidation phases that may be pretty mild. But in general, this thing's going to go higher. So... Um, Anyhow, that's my 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 opinion over the next several months is that the market's going to go higher. So sure, uh, so, you know, and every uh, so, every indicator you've been showing us has has pointed that as well. You know, yep. So yep. so there's quite a few different views of it. You know, so I, I guess if you do get a, you know, I think the worst pullback we're going to have over the next three four months, whatever, is maybe five six. Five percent at most. I don't think that's going to happen. You might see a three percent at best, but I don't see ten percent pullbacks over the next several months. I'll put it that way. So uh, we can go to take a look at the gold market real quick. Sure. So um, uh, well, so for chart five, five, yes, okay, the pre inflation index. Yeah, the inflation deflation. I do an RSI on this thing, and it works pretty well. It picks out short term lows, and uh, I've been. Kind of leaning on the, the bullish side on the bigger time frames. I still think uh, uh, August of uh, 2022, or it looks like about well, October of 2022 was an important low. I don't think that low is going to be broken for a while. And since over the last actually six months, since August of last year, this market has virtually moved sideways. It really yep. hadn't gone up, really hadn't gone down. It's pretty much at the price it was back in July of August of last year. It's just gone sideways here. And we're getting another short-term buy signal because when the RSI of this ratio falls below 30, then turns up, which I think is turning up right now, uh, we're probably seeing a low in this vicinity as we're speaking. And what's important, what the next rally does, normally when you get into chop, the market soon after will start a, a, a impulse wave. You go impulse wave to chop to impulse wave to chop. And that's how the market works. And we've been in chop for the last six months. We're due for an impulse wave. But will this next rally be an impulse wave? Don't know for sure. But if it, if it does manage to be an impulse wave where it rallies at least you know a couple of months, uh, then I think that changes a lot in the market. Um, but anyhow, on a short-term basis, there's a bullish signal right here. How big the bounce is, I'm not for sure. But 
Let's turn to chart six. Okay, we have the weekly GDX. Yeah, the weekly GDX. And this is a chart. Uh, actually, this is the weekly. And we're going to look at the monthly. This is a chart that picks out the trends. Uh, and if you can see, we're in uh, the chop part right now. The major signals come. Uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you what they are. The bottom window is the weekly up down volume percent. So it, it measures the up down volume. And the next window higher was the advanced decline percent. So, and I put a Bollinger band on it. Major sell, sell signals are, occur, and that's the red lines across there, which has been three of them, occur when the, that indicator, both indicators fall below the mid Bollinger band. So it gave a sell signal back in 2012, gave a buy signal in 2016, gave a sell signal in 2017, gave a actually kind of a double buy signal in 2019, had a decent rally, gave a sell signal in 2021, and actually gave uh, two false signals. They actually both of them got above the mid Bollinger band that fell back down again. Uh, so, which is pretty unusual, but it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And right now we're still below mid Bollinger band on the weekly time frame. So, on, so if we can rally, uh, on page, you know, the previous, uh, page, if we can rally for a couple of months, most likely this weekly, both weeklies will turn above the mid Bollinger band and give a multi. You know, normally these these type of rallies last at least a year, if not a couple of years, and uh, that would turn. We need a rally on GDX to last a couple of months to turn these indicators back above the mid Bollinger band. When that's going to happen, I don't know. It depends on you know the next rally. If it lasts a couple of months, uh, it'll be a pretty big bullish signal. Absolutely. Tim, I, I, you, we have two more left. Uh, if, you, if you're okay with staying to the next one, we just uh, knock them out. That, that would be awesome because I, I want to hear more about right. gold in particular. So, All right. Okay. Awesome. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Welcome back, folks. Take a look at the GDX right now, trading at 28.23, up about 1.91%. We are on with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. He was talking basically about the outlook uh, for gold. Tim, you're still with us? Yep, I still am. So, yeah. Uh, let's, take a, let's, let's go back to chart five. Okay. Um, the, the only reason why we're bringing this up again, anyhow, it's giving a bicycle right now. What's well, important? Yep. How long that bicycle will last? <coughs> Excuse me. Let me get a smaller here. I needed to my get one during the break dry. too. It's allergies or something, Tim? No, no. I just, my throat's a little dry. Yeah. But anyhow, <laughs> uh, chart five. So whatever, you know, the, if this rally out of chart five can last a couple of months, you know, three, four months or something like that, or at least two months, if you go to chart six now, mm -hmm. if that, this is a degree of time on the chart number five, if it can last several months, most likely if that does happen, it will pull the uh, uh, bottom window indicator and the next window up indicator probably above the Bollinger Bands. And if we can do that, then you're looking that rally to continue higher right. probably for, you know, a multi-year type rally because this, this weekly chart is a multi-year chart. If we can get above the mid Bollinger Band and stay there, which normally when that happens, it usually stays above it, it goes on. And uh, so I'm thinking at some point, Fairly near term, we're not talking years out because this thing, uh, the, the weekly, has, has stayed below the mid Bollinger Band since 2021. Well, that's three years ago, and most of these signals, at most, like they had one last, you know, for 2012 high down 2016. That was a four year signal, but most of these signals last about a year and a half give or take, year and a half two. Well, it's already been three years since the last signal, so we're due. Or something other than down here, and so I'm thinking at some point we're going to get above that mid Bollinger band in both those indicators, and most likely it's going to stay above those mid Bollinger bands for at least a year, maybe two or three years. So yeah. it depends on this next rally. You know, if it can last a couple three months, most likely the weeklies will turn bullish. Now, if that can happen, let's flip to chart seven. Okay. So 
Now, if, if the weekly if you can get above the mid Bollinger Band, stay above mid Bollinger Band, it'll flip. This is a monthly chart of the same indicators, but on a monthly time frame. Mm-hmm. And so far, the monthly is also below the mid Bollinger Bands on both of them. But if you look where they are, if you look at the bottom window, which is the uh, monthly cumulative advanced decline, you're matching the 2016 low. So it's see. it's yeah, it's really a beat up. Yeah, if you, it is. If, you go, if you go on to the next one higher, which is the up down volume, it's pretty close to matching the 2016 low. So the markets in general are really sold out. You really want you know extreme uh, situations to the downside because uh, you know we had three years of selling here. You know when we'll, when yes. will the selling stop? You know most likely will stop at the previous lows, and we're in that vicinity now. So well, and you that's see too like on a bigger time frames, but right now they still haven't turned up. So. Yeah, and, and you see not like a, a you know. We've, we've been getting a general downward kind of movement, right? But e- even on the year, you just see kind of this, at least I'm looking at the GDX right now, yeah? This, this kind of movement up towards around 32 level. Of course, we had a low in about October of last year, 25.62, then up a little bit and low. It's just, it's, it's kind of sleepy. I'm just talking about the GDX right now. Um, but I, I hear what you're saying on that kind of like oversold situation, right? Like it, it's not seeming like it's going to go much lower right now, uh, but it's just a question yeah, of like, when does this wake up? And when it wakes up, I don't have any doubt that this is, you know, it's going to be great. Yeah, probably a good opportunity. So let's look at top, you know, on the chart number seven, look at the top window there, which is the monthly GDX. And I drew a trend line across that where the tops were going back to that 2021 high. So we really had a bunch of chop for a long period of right. time. But uh, to, to really break a trend line, you know, if you ever look at study Weisskopf, you need to break a trend line with this. Well, going up through a trend line, you need to break with a sign of strength. That's a SOS there. And if you notice, we're not backing away from that trend line, that blue trend line right there. So we're kind of hug, hugging, hugging that area. And so I'm, I'm saying if we can, uh, you know, go back to chart five, which is basically that short term bullish signal we got on uh, the inflation deflation ratio. If that can stay on a buy signal for a couple of months, most likely we'll, we'll get through that trend line, probably with a sign of strength, and that will change everything on this chart. So uh, we're, we're close, but has that thing, other than a short term buy signal, the intermediate term trend, I have to say right now, is still down, mm-hmm. but the. It's, it's to a point where you're matching the lows of 2016 are coming close. And, and so the market's, you know, pretty much sold out. You know, when, when will it get above the mid Bollinger Bands? It'll be after the low because this is kind of a delayed indicator. It doesn't try to pick the exact tops or the exact bottoms, but does give you the meat of the majority of, of, of the, the advanced declines. In other words, if you look, look at the last sell signal, we had 2021. If you look at where it took, you know, if you look at, at where it happened on the uh, GDX, which is the top window, it was actually several or a couple of months after the top. So I'm thinking that the bottom's in of, of, of September, October of 2022. We're in a sideways consolidation right now. And uh, at, at some point, we're probably going to have a sign of strength through looks like about a 30 range or about 32 maybe on GDX. If we can get through that, then uh, I think there's a new ball game uh, coming for a lot of these gold stocks. Most of these gold stocks have, have really just be, been beat up since 2021. Um, so it's it's kind of a dull market. But, you know, after dull, there's uh, euphoria. So I'm that's thinking right. that's way in front of us yet. But um yeah, it looks looks promising. I'll put it that way. It's not like we're at some major high here, mm-hmm. looking for a big down. We're probably approaching some sort of a major low, but we haven't turned up yet. And so, how long is that waiting game going to occur? I don't know, but it doesn't seem to be years out. You know, it could be several weeks, maybe several months. But my bet would probably happen this year sometime. Sure. So I don't know. Um, don't really have a time frame, but it's due. You know, it's yes. We we've been on a sell signal since 2021. You know, can it go another three years? Yeah, you know, it could, but it's undoubtful because previous signals last about a year and a half or two. So 
we'll have to wait and see how that all forms up. But we'll be there as as we progress forward. I'll uh, you know I'll be a little glad to, to come on your show and say, yeah, the weekly cumulative advance decline and the monthly cumulative advance decline both close above Mitch Bollinger Band, and I can say with confidence that we're probably in a multi-year rally. So, and I hope that yeah. happens sometime this year. So we'll see. <laughs> I do too. Tim, thank you so much for joining us today. That was insightful as always. Okay. I appreciate you having me on. Yeah. Thank you. So, it, folks, that was Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. You check over here right now. This is his website. Go give him a visit. You the home, the newsletter, get to contact us. Go check it out. Tim, thank you so much.